everybody, Spotted Gecko here, bringing you another video for the game World of Warships Legend. And today I'm going to be doing a guide in gameplay for the near, the new Tier 4 battleship, the Gulio Caesar. And I'm sure I may have pronounced it wrong, but sorry about that. Anyways, this is the ship right here. This is the photo mode. She has her standard typical candy striping in the front there. Now, she is once again Italian and and they do make really good looking ships. You gotta like the also the uh, premium camo on there is really nice as well. You also can notice that you have uh, a forward triple turret as well as a forward dual turret. And the same thing for the rear. A rear triple and a rear dual. So you have the A, B and uh, Y, Z there. And some nice secondaries along the side. Alright, now, what I'm going to be doing with this video for the guy, I'll be looking at the stats, I'll be looking at the upgrade slot as well as the consumables, and I'll be looking at the commander of choice on here, there is only one, and also we'll be taking this ship, this ship out on a standard match, which was a really good match. Um, it was a Kraken with 11 Citadels. This Tier 4 battleship is capable. Alright, let's have a look at the stats here. Now, first off we have here is we're going to look at the upgrade slots. You only get one. It's a Tier 4 battleship. So you only get the one. And for this one, you could choose the standard aiming, secondary, or main battery. I wanted the aiming systems, so that's what I chose. But a lot of people just might choose uh, the main battery to get a better traverse speed. But the uh, traverse speed on these guns are already pretty good to begin with. But you can make them go even faster now. And secondary battery, you might do a secondary build, but I think the aiming systems is where you want to go here. Now, if we move on from this one... That's it for the upgrade slots. Let's look at the stats of this ship. Now, first off here, we'll look over at uh, the survivability. She's got 45,500 hell points for uh, Tier 4. Now, do note, the only other competition she has for premium battleship at this tier is the Texas and the Russian Nikolai. And this is the uh, third premium Tier 4 battleship available. Now... We have armor, we have 280 mil, and we have a half decent uh, tier 4 um, torpedo damage reduction of 30%, which is really nice. Now, artillery. Now, I have to say that these guns are just awesome. These are 320 mils. You have two dual turrets and two triple turrets, like I showed you in the uh, photo mode there. Firing range right now is 13.3 kilometers. That's down by 10% because I'm using the brawling skill. Reload time is sitting at a very good 25.8 seconds and a turret turn time initially of 30.27 uh, seconds, which is pretty darn good. Now, um, HE shells, you have a 35% chance of starting the fire, 4,800 in damage. Now, the AP shells, like I said, these are pretty nice, 9,700. And here you have your secondary armament start at a 4.2 kilometer range. So I don't really know if you really want to make a secondary build. I really think you're... Uh, I don't think it's a good idea. I think you want to sit with the aiming or at least the main battery. Now, maneuverability. She's a fast ship. 27.8 knots. Turn circle, a beautiful 640. The thing is maneuverable. And a nice rudder shift time of 12 seconds for a battleship. And like I always say with concealment, you're a big ship. You're going to get spotted, okay? Overview. She is ironclad. Above average armor thickness. Greater resistance to all forms of armor penetration. But do be careful. If you show your broadside with this, now it's a brawler, but there are some uh, definite um, um, uh, basically, uh, weak spots on the broadside. And I'll show you in my, uh, my, uh, my gameplay where I basically siddle the crap out of one of these ships on the opposing team and you can see what i mean by that uh she's got modest guns ship is armed with low caliber main battery guns but you know what these low caliber guns they hit hard okay now let's have a look at the uh right up they have here this is the lead ship in the first series of italian dreadnoughts in the 1930s the ship was rebuilt with more powerful and longer range guns additional torpedo protection and considerably more speed than before and yeah she is fast making her a formidable opponent for the majority of battleships at that time she entered service back at the uh world war one in 1914 ships in the series there are three okay now let's move down to the um consumables well it's basic you have a damage control party 
of, which has a duration of 10.5, reload time of 76. is basic. And right now I got four heals on here, which is nice. Nice. It's about 241 HP per second. Not too bad. Not too bad. All right, we got the flag on here, but you can choose. Um, you may, if you depending on which one you buy, you can get one of the Italian flags. I'm just going to put my CC flag on there, and there's her permanent camel right there. All right, so if we go back, now let's just have a look here at the commander. We only have the one command, the one battleship commander. It's the brawling commander, and I found him to be okay on the Roma. However, I think he really does outstanding on the uh, the Caesar here. Now let's look at him here. Okay, we're going to bring him up. And so how I have him set up, and this has been, I think his setup right now has been working beautifully for this Tier 4 battleship. And like I said, you'll see that the match I've had, I've had nothing but really good matches with this ship. Now, first off, we have uh, Cunningham. I always, always, always recommend as your number one spot for inspiration for battleship commanders with is the uh, Andrew Cunningham, the British battleship commander. All because of his concentrated devastation ability, giving you that better shell grouping, which is also precision or accuracy. And right now, since I have Cunningham at a level 16, it's at 4.5%, and that's really nice to have. And plus, because these are low-cal guns, I also wanted to uh, give him a Robert here to give some extra penetration punch, and I think that's working out nicely. Now, the base trait of this dude is uh, time is of the essence. This is the quick and the reload time of your battleship main guns, which is really nice to have. He's got an additional almost 4% um, reduction in his reload, which is nice. Now, first off, I have him at level 12. I'm going to probably raise him up just because he's so good on this ship. So the first rank here is maxed out. Now, um... I was using this to uh, reduce the risk of catching fire, but I don't think at this tier that fire is really all that... Um, the HE spamming ships aren't really all that, um, I guess you could say, devastating. So I think it's okay to take the brawling skill here because I really like the reduction in the reload time, getting more shells away, minus 10%. And also that torpedo detectability is also a nice thing to have, even though your uh, range is going to be reduced by 10%. You know what? That's okay. Um, it's more difficult to shoot with the ship at that kind of a range. When you get more in the brawling range, this ship is just devastating. Now, let's look here. Initially, I was playing with the crisscross to give more turret speed, but I moved over to doing Artisan's Touch. And I think Artisan's Touch is a really good skill to have for this ship. Not the Roma, I don't think, but for this ship. Now, we get the AP Shell Penetration Multiplier plus 8%. And time to detonation of my battleship's AP shells are at plus 10%, which is okay. I do want to max it out to get that plus 10%. Now, for the level 3 uh, skill here, Firefighter. So this is my fire resistance right here. Minus 5% for now, which is okay. And, of course, we're taking Master Mechanic to give us that plus 1 uh, heal, which I think is important. And for this ship, I went with Running with Scissors. Because I really want to get it up to a Legendary level 3 at least. Because um, I really like the additional 15% damage to my AP shells or HE shells when I'm within the range of enemy ships. And I want to get this one up high just for that. But anyways, that's how I have um, Revel set up. Now, what we're going to do next is we are going to take this ship out into a standard match. And the standard match I have is pre-recorded. It is a really, really good match with the, um, the Caesar. I ended up getting 5 sickings. I got the Kraken with it. But... On top of that, I got 11 Citadels, and you can see where I got them from. All right? So, hope you stick around for that, and uh, you can see the power of this ship coming up next. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you for sticking around to watch this uh, devastating match with the, um, the Caesar here. Now, this has been one really fun ship to play. Here she is right here. She does look really nice. I do really like this ship, and I love how it's performing, too. This is really giving... A, um, a run for the money is this could end up being uh, one of the really better battleships for tier four. I certainly find it a lot better than a Texas, and it certainly is a lot better, or it's on par. If not, it might be better than the actual Nikolai. But anyways, uh, we are in a tier four uh, match. We're top tier. We have tier three ships, and we have a couple of Arkansas's, um, a enemy uh, Caesar, which I'm going to show you. Uh, when fighting that, that ship, just where potentially the weakness can be on the, uh, the Caesar. And you're just going to have to be careful with uh, of if you're going to be going into um, brawling combat. And she does really excel in brawling combat. At least I think so. 
I'm sure that people might have different opinions out there, but you know what? I'm really, really liking this ship. I think it's right now it's well worth the 6,200 doubloons it cost for this ship, and uh, I think you probably will end up enjoying it and be one of the ships that you would probably tend to play quite a bit at this tier. Anyways, it does also handle itself pretty well against tier five ships as well. And uh, we don't have any tier fives here, but I have played a number of matches with the um, with this ship against tier five ships like the Arizona, uh, the War Spite, and it's done very, very well. All right, so first off, there we have it. There is the enemy Caesar, and that's gonna be our first target. Uh, unfortunately, we don't sink it, but we certainly do almost do. And that would have given us six sinkings, but unfortunately we don't get that. But man, we get 119,000 in uh, a damage just from a tier four match, and that's good. Now, he took a shot on us and missed, and we're going to get him on his broadside here. So, he's going to get right on the broadside. Now, now then I realized I fired HG. I'm going, aw, oh, blast. So, I have to switch over to AP. So, I kind of screwed that one right up there. <laughs> so, anyways, it does happen every once in a while. You forget that you had HG running on the ship previously, and you don't end up checking it. Now, here we are. We're going to once again line up that uh, ghoulie over there, the Caesar. I'm sure it's a different pronunciation, but I'm calling it Caesar for now. And uh, we're going to take the shot in a moment here, and you can watch it just get hammered with citadels here. And there we go. Three citadels on that strike. And that literally almost destroyed the, the ship in one shot. So just be aware of that when you are playing the ship. you got to be careful with the broadside sometimes, okay? So as long as you're, as long as you're half decently angled, you're going to do fine. Okay, now we're going to go on the um, the Italian cruiser here, the Tier Three uh, Guisano, I believe you call it. We're going to take a shot at it. We're going to we misjudged its uh, speed there, so our lead time on the shells was off. But we did basically uh, touch the stern just a little bit there. There's also a Degue sitting around in there. There's a couple of Arkansas over there, so there's lots of targets here that we can uh, line up. Like I said, we do get five sinkings here. We're already at 37,000 after all that damage we did to the Guilio, or the Caesar. Now, what I think I misjudged here was he was starting to slow down, so now I'm just going to hit his bow. And once again, uh, we don't do all that much damage to the, uh, the Italian cruiser there. Now, we're going to uh, move again on this thing. I think it's going to get wiped out here before we shoot. Or we may have shot as it gets wiped out. Okay, it just blew up right there. Okay, so we didn't shoot. Now, we have the enemy Arkansas right there. It's just a little bit out of our range, so we can't fire on it. So now we're going to move over to the French cruiser, the Degue. And we're going to get a good shot on it. It's, gonna, it's on an angle, so we'll probably get some citadels here. And sure enough, bam, we get the one citadel on it, knocking it down or practically almost killing it there. And that gives us our fourth citadel. Now, we did get 11 citadels in this match, which is uh, quite something for a battleship. You know, you get these matches every once in a while, and especially for this ship, I think it's going to be relatively easy to do that. <laughs> Anyways, they got a shot under the way, and we're going to wipe it out here. We should be able to get another citadel on it because it's angled like that. And sure enough, boom, there it goes. We got the citadel, so that puts us up to five now, which is really nice. Okay, so the next things we're going to be looking at is these Arkansas, and I'm telling you, Oh man, this uh, this Caesar just dominates these Arkansas. Now, do note the Arkansas is probably the most powerful tier three battleship out there, but not against this tier four Italian uh, dreadnought here. Now watch this thing hit right into its uh, area there and whammo four citadels and wiped out the Arkansas completely. Like that was just a devastating strike. Now we have the second Arkansas there, and we're going to do the exact same thing to that one. We are going to just destroy it. We're going to wait for it to uh, to becomes a broadside. We're going to get the aim right in there for the citadels. Like I was just amazed at how well this tier four battleship just annihilated the, that very powerful tier three ship. Here they go again, right in there, and now watch this thing just get annihilated again. And gone. Two more citadels, and we just wiped out that Arkansas. And now that gives us 11 citadels. So that's our 11 citadels in the, in the match right there. We've got three sinkings, so we have two more sinkings to go. 
and we have two ships so we're gonna get these last two ships now our initial problem right here is that their destroyer the t-22 has decided to take our base so I'm just letting letting people know about the uh, the destroyer there now I am worried about the t-22 and launching its torpedoes because it's well within range mind you I got a uh, Queen Elizabeth I think it's a Queen is that yeah, so we are in a tier 5 match, actually, because that's a, uh, the Queen's there, I believe, isn't it? Anyways, we're going to take some shots at it. It looks like the Queen Elizabeth, doesn't it? Anyways. And we did get a hit on the uh, Destroyer, I believe. And here comes the Torps. That's what I was worried about. So I kicked my, uh, my water brakes on. And I'm uh, moving away from it. And we are going to take two torpedo hits here. The first one will not do a flooding. Right into our belt, and the second one got us forward, causing the flooding. And we are going to heal that flooding and uh, get some hull points going. But now, at the moment, now I'm thinking, okay, should I veer to the right or should I veer to the left because of the island here and just get my uh, my bearings back? So what I ended up doing, I ended up veering towards the left, thinking that the um, the ship that's that was with me should be able to handle that uh, destroyer and I'm gonna turn my ship around here go around the island and I'm gonna fire at the Iron Duke while I'm doing it and come out the other side and I'm gonna find that destroyer and wipe it out but I'm thinking that the destroyer is gonna get wiped out by the battleship that I left there hindsight I should have gone right instead of this way but uh, well I committed to this direction so now I have to deal with it so we ended up missing our uh, forward battery shots on the Iron Duke it's gonna go behind the island here over there so we're not gonna get another shot on it and I believe the Iron Duke is probably gonna wipe out our destroyer over there I believe which means the uh, cruiser is not gonna have much of a chance against that Duke so I decided I'm gonna stay here and wipe out that Iron Duke to give our ships a chance to take the red base so that's my plan wipe out the Iron Duke so our ships can take the red base and sure enough, we lost a destroyer. We have only the cruiser left, and the cruiser is not going to beat that thing. So we're going to fire here, and we should be able to sink the Iron Duke on this shot. And sure enough, we did. We got him on that shot with a single penetration. Okay, so that gives our cruiser free Rhine to take the red base. That was my plan. It doesn't come out that way. So now the next step we're going to do is we're going to go off because we lost our battleship that was trying to take out the destroyer in there, the T-22. So now I'm going to have to hit towards our base to get onto base. Now this ship is fast enough to do it. We'll get over there in time and try not to get myself sunk by torpedoes. Hopefully delaying the... My plan is to delay the destroyer in there long enough for our cruiser guy to take that base. So he's doing that right now, which is good. That's what I want him to do. At least that's what I'm hoping and doing. I'm assuming he's going to do that. But the cruiser guy is not going to do that. He's going to turn around and leave the base and start sailing all the way over to here. Now, here I am. Got the torps again. I'm going to take a shot here. I'm going to take a hit. Luckily, I can get rid of the flooding. So I'm assuming right now that destroyer is going to be running the edge of our base. So I kind of have a really good idea where he is now. And he's probably going to move towards the inside, towards the rear. He's going to try and get himself away from me as much as possible. And basically put torps in the water. That's my plan. That's his plan, I'm guessing. So I'm just going to maneuver my, sh my ship around here. Giving him a false sense of direction. Hopefully offsetting his torpedoes. And here we are. Our cruiser guy is taking the red base, which is great. That's what I'm thinking he's doing. And like I said, he's going to leave the red base. And I have no idea why he did it. Which means I'm going to have to try to end this destroyer to win this match. Okay, there's the destroyer. He's pretty much where I thought he was going to be. We're going to take a shot on him just as he disappears. And because we're maneuvering the way we are, we are going to miss the torpedoes here, which is perfect. That's what we wanted to do. We caused the destroyer player to miscalculate his, his uh, torpedo strike. And sure enough, look what the cruiser on the enemy side did. He decided to leave. Like, oh my god, just stay there and take the base. But now I'm going to have to find the destroyer and kill it. So there he is. 
Now we're going to get our shots on him. He's, he's obviously going to start a smoke cloud here. Okay, there goes the smoke cloud. And boom, we got him. That gives us the Kraken, which is awesome. And it gives us 119,000, I believe, in uh, damage. A really, really good match with this ship. This ship is turning out to be a powerhouse. Now, there we go. And sometimes the guns can be a little uh, inconsistent. So we got 121,000, even better. A bunch of medallions. We came in number one, but it's okay. The whole team uh, participated in that. But we had our good dominating match. And sure enough, we made 372,000 there. Only cost of us 21,000 in service. Well, there you have it, guys. That's the match with this uh, new uh, Tier 4 Italian battleship. I really do hope you liked it. And if you did, uh, please give me a like. And hopefully this will give you a, um, a guide as to whether or not uh, you will want to purchase this ship. For I think it's 62.50 uh, in the store. If you do, I think you might. I think you just might like it. Anyways, as a spotted gecko gamer, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the on the seas next time. Today's